Uh, hey guys, welcome back. I was gonna record a multi-commentary. Unfortunately, I didn't really find people at the right time. The reason why is because most of the people that I uh, call on Skype over with are in Australia. And of course, their time zones are a lot, like, ahead of mine. So it's, it's really hard to uh, get them to contact. But I decided to make up for it and do another strategy guide. So in this one, this is going to be a bit less basic than the last one. And I'm going to try to make this a long clip as well. Um, that might fail if it's on play fast here. So let's just get a few things over with. Um, the main categories of maps are low hunt, high hunt, and water. This is water, for example. So let's start with water, since this happened to be a water map. Water maps include Mediterranean, like this one. Um, there's one called Anatolia, Midgard, and the very last one, which is Highland, except that map can be played as a high hunt or water. If you're Atlantean, I suggest you play Highland as high hunt, but otherwise you can do water. Since the, well, here's why. If it's one versus one, then the water's like right in the middle, a thin strip of layer, and plus there are bears everywhere. So your villager not only could easily die, but it takes so long to get there, it's not even worth making a shipyard. You should just play it as high hunt. For the rest of the gods, it's not important since, you know, it's, well, like one villager is not that valuable. Um, that's water. High hunt is, well, I'm sure you guys already know. For example, marsh, uh, tundra, mm, what else, watering hole. Those are the three main high hunt maps. They can vary, like sometimes if you play Alfheim, you start with High Hunt right by your town center. Uh, this is not considered High Hunt, even though they're boars, you know, it's a low hunt map, it's actually water. Anyways, <clears throat> yeah, those are the three main High Hunt maps, these three, Marsh, Tundra, and Watering Hole. People say that Savannah is High Hunt, but I don't really find it a High Hunt map, just because you start with uh, Low Hunt by your base. So. There are tons of hunt around the map, but I consider it low hunt just because you start with hunt around your base, so it's not the same thing. For low hunt, uh, it's the rest of the maps, and the low hunt actually has more maps than the others. Um, so let's start with Savannah. In my opinion, that's a low hunt map. Oasis, that's for sure a low hunt map. Ghost Lake, that's also a low hunt. And lastly, lastly, what is it? I know there's one more. Just <laughs> give me a second. You can watch the magical game while I think about it. Oh, Alfheim. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So those four are the main low hunt maps down here. Um, in low hunt, I'll get into more detail. In low hunt, you do not have to make like upgrades. You do not have to upgrade your hunting dogs. In water, you, well, you mostly have to make a shipyard if you want to play good. And in high hunt, like I said, it's the opposite of low hunt. You just have to make yourself upgraded to high hunt. Like, you just have to upgrade hunting dogs. Um, hmm, that screen went black. One sec. Alright, um, that sucked. My screen went black, as you guys saw, and I had to re-record. Re I mean, not re-record, but start recording again from the beginning of this recorded clip. I, I'm just speeding it up. But when I did that, it happened again. So I started again. But this time if it happens, I finally got a solution. I tested it and yeah. I mean a solution if it happens. I'll just cut that out from the video and it will resume in a few seconds. Whatever. Uh, that's not gonna stop me from making this video. I was gonna talk about High Hunt. <clears throat> so you upgrade High Hunt. I mean hunting dogs on those maps. I think it, that's the main point of high hunt, upgrading and stuff. Um, for low hunt, you do not upgrade hunting dogs, you do not upgrade anything in fact. And many people find it hard to play, uh, obviously because you don't get much resources. Even though you don't upgrade high hunt, you should still hunt the food around your base if it's hunt. Well, instead of like gathering from bushes. Okay, so I was talking about upgrading your hunt on, I uh, what's it called? Yeah, high hunt, of course. 
And on low hunt, you do not upgrade anything, so you don't even have to make an economic guild when you're Atlantean and stuff. It's... Well, people usually rush on low hunt. Same with me. On low hunt, I advance at 4 minutes. Or sometimes, very rarely, 4.30. But, yeah, it's more of a rush than my high hunt, because... Since you have no resources, your only chance, basically, is to just attack fast, because then they're, they're basically screwed. So, yeah. Uh, I hope I did not forget anything, because I had to start recording from this point at, like, uh, three times in a row. That black screen error kept happening and other stuff. Anyways, um, hmm. Those are the three main categories of maps. Water, low hunt, high hunt. My favorite, well, everyone's favorite is high hunt, since that's very easy to play, and you do your best on it. But I also like Mediterranean, or at least I used to like it against other people since yeah I I don't know it's different against people than computers but what else do I have to say hmm with Atlantean on on water for example um, well with any god you send your first villager to your dock make a shipyard make a few ships but just enough so you can still make mainers or houses and then loop your ships until a uh, period until you can't find more fishing ships or sh uh, fish that's another thing do not just send your fishing ships all the way out here like look at how far that is yeah that's not worth it tons of people used to do that because they thought that if you send it back here then the other guy doesn't get fish but then you kind of waste your population too, it's hard to say. I mean, you could do that against people, but it's not worth it to send it out here. As you can see, I didn't even send it back there. Like, if I would send it back here, I'd just make a new dock here and use all these fish. That's actually what I did later in game. Um, hmm. So my, my Kronos water strategy, basically, I'm just jumping into it, is... First villager goes to make a shipyard and then chops wood after the shipyard is done. The second villager, well, the first one it already spawns immediately. The second one gathers food, preferably pigs. It's best to get pigs because uh, the closer they are to your town center, well, you don't have to walk that far, and it just it just matters a lot in the very beginning of the game. Um, if there's hunt like boars here, I guess that's worth it more, so you can just do that. Deer, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, my third villager also goes on pigs, and my fourth villager goes on wood. So that's, now I have two wood and two food. But I ran out of population because I also made two fishing ships right after my shipyard was done. So I'm supposed to be making a manor right now at this point. Um, and after the manor is done, I make another villager. Well, it should be done by now. And that one also goes on food. So three food, two wood. Next one goes on food, but before it does, it makes a temple, and then it goes on food. And the last one goes on food. So you have seven villagers in total, two wood, five food. So that seems like a lot on food, plus all the fishing ships you should have on food by now. That's simply so you can advance to classical age at a decent pace. <clears throat> when you start advancing, people usually send uh, three of your five food gatherers onto gold, and two of the rest onto wood. So now you have all on wood and gold, and you spam tons of fishing ships. Meanwhile, make a second shipyard, and make a new manor using one of your gold miners. So you should have 55 population right now, and two shipyards. Now when you advance, just spam tons of these... Ba... Ba... Rim... Ba... Rim... I don't know. <laughs> spam tons of those, and... That's it. I usually make four, like two from each dock so they train fast and then if you want you can make more shipyards um, like I did more fishing ships and actually make villagers on food later in game um, that's the main point of the start you have to focus on military of course like I did here that's your problem <laughs> I'm not gonna try to explain everything here however for an Atlantean high hunt um, First, your very first spawn villager makes a guild, and then you upgrade hunting dogs. Then it goes to hunt. Second one also goes to hunt. 
third one goes to chop wood and fourth one makes uh i mean he goes to gold and that makes him mainer when you can afford one that's a very typical high hunt uh atlantean strategy but that's how it goes basically i mean maybe half of you already knew that but for the other half you didn't yeah that's really useful that's how you start atlantean on high hunt in most cases um so wait two one one you have four villagers your fifth one goes on food and your sixth one so you have three three food one wood one gold your sixth one makes a temple then goes on wood and then your seventh one goes on gold and you should be advancing right now you should start advancing at three minutes and 30 seconds remember to open this time or you have to press f11 like that so yeah you should start advancing at 330 and then you're done at 430 you might be a few seconds off if you don't use hotkeys and everything's accurate so maybe 435 i don't know i'm um, usually 431 if i'm off a bit uh and then you should have advanced now it depends what units you make according to whatever the enemy is but i always make one barracks one counter and loop my units from the temple which should be promethean speaking of that um i usually gather my scouts and use valor near villager patch the reason why you should do this is because then you can make more villagers. The normal maximum for Atlantean is 25. However, if you do that, then you have 25 plus 3 heroes. So that's already 28. That's perfect. Um, so if we look at Kronos that way, then Kronos is actually better in economy than Gaia. Even though Gaia is famous for her epic economy, Kronos is actually better on the long term. Like, by long term, I mean 15 minutes plus in-game. Kronos is better for sure. On uh, land maps, of course. Because your max villager is increased, and you can just own with all those resources. Yeah, Gaia is a quick economy booster at the beginning of the game, maybe first 10 minutes. But Kronos can overpower it after 15, because you get a more... You get a higher amount of villagers. Anyways, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, you're advanced, you make mid units... Terma, Marmillo. If you want, you can make Cheerio Ballista if the enemy is, you know, spamming tons of uh, hoplites, whatever they are. Usually, Norse guys make lots of infantry, so you should do that against them. I want to say something else. Whatever. I'll leave it to that for a high hunt map. For a low hunt map, version 1, the rush version, um, basically, this is. Well, okay. So you send your first three villagers on food. Then the fourth one chops wood for just one chop, so you get five wood from it. And then it makes a mainer, I think. Yeah, then it makes a mainer, because you should be out of population at that point. And if you want, you can make your temple with that same villager. But I usually do that a bit later. So you have four on food right now. And then the fifth one comes, which could make the temple if you don't already have one. And then the sixth one. So you have six on food. You do not make any more and you start advancing. And you, you should have been advanced all the way up to classic all in four minutes. It can be done in less, but four minutes is average. Um, yeah. So that's what I do on low hunt maps. But here's the trick. It's, it involves a lot of switching. So instead of... I mean, you don't simply... Oh, nice. We did an earthquake here. You don't simply just, you know, send all on food. So when you start advancing, I usually send two on wood and two on gold. But sometimes I send three on wood. So you only have one left on food. Then I just spam a lot on food when I'm in next stage. Yeah, usually it's two, two, two. Then I make more on food. And whatnot. Um, you loop your Promethean and Terma. And if you can afford it, you can make Mermillos. But I usually do that a bit later, like I said. I don't really like those early rushes because your economy is screwed, so I don't do them often. However, on Lohan, that's my main tactic. However, I have another Lohan tactic for any of you guys who don't like rushing. Um, this one is based off of my high hunt that I improv- I mean, I improvise this off of the high hunt strategy. So it works kind of like high hunt, but without the mainer, or gil, I mean. <laughs> so you send your first two villagers on food. Except since you don't have hunt and you gather slowly, I'm gonna tell you to send your first three villagers on food. And then the next one on wood, who makes a mainer, the next one on gold. So you have three food, one wood, one gold. Um, 
<laughs> I was gonna say something else. Yeah, then you send one more on wood and one more on gold, so that's seven villagers. And you can start advancing right now. Um, yeah, like I said, you can start advancing at that point. And then you should, when, when you're advanced, you should be able to make another town center. That's a trick. So when you advance, immediately just make a town center, whatever you can afford it, maybe even before you're advanced. And then you have two town centers and you just spam villagers super fast. Um, then that mostly covers up for being low hunt and bad economy. So that's the fast two town center trick on low hunt. Um, when do you use it, you may be asking. Well, you use it if the enemy is usually Egyptian and you're, you know, Cronus or something. Um, the reason why is Egyptians don't often rush. And since they don't rush, you can just take care of the economy more. Well, at least before you attack them. <laughs> hmm. Um. Yeah. I'm just going to go off topic. Kronos is basically the same as Uranos. Uh, many people have been asking me why I like Kronos. Well, I simply like it because... Hmm. First of all, it has Valor, but Uranos has that too, I know. Except for the Third Age, it also has Behemoth. And plus, Mathians are cheaper. I like those stuff. Um, but Behemoth, you know, their epic siege myth. Where are they? Oh, they died. Yep, all of them died. So whatever, their epic siege myth units. Uh, I really like those and other Kronos stuff. Uranos simply has faster units, except it has Shockwave instead of Deconstruction. That's useful. <coughs> However, it cannot pick this god. Uh, the god who has Behemoth for her third age. That's the game. Um, um, so yeah, since it can't pick the same third age god, I don't. I kind of like Chronos better. But remember, they're both the same. Really, they have the same advantages. They both use Valor, max twenty villagers. I mean, you can upgrade them to heroes, but that's not worth it. Um, so max twenty eight if you use Valors on uh, Valor on villagers. And what else? You know, they're mostly the same. There's nothing else to say about them. So. If you're trying to decide uh, between Uranus and Kronos, then you don't have to ask me, you know. They're both the same, just pick whichever one you like. I simply like Kronos for the reasons I already said. You might be liking Uranus because you can raid better. These Terma only have 5 speed. Uranus has like 5.5, .5, I don't know. So all units are faster and you can use Shockwave on the enemy's villager patch and kill a few. So that's also useful. Um, that was basically an Atlantean villager setup guide thing. This is still not an advanced strategy guide, but I already explained basically everything for the very beginning of the game in an Atlantean match. So I, I might do more of these tips, build-ups, or layouts, whatever they're called. These are maybe strategy guides. I... Didn't really make this episode as epic as I wanted to. First, I was going to do multi-commentary, but, you know, I already said my reasons. And second, I wanted to make a 30-minute long episode or longer. However, I'm assuming this clip is like 10 minutes long. It feels really long because I had to restart recording many times and tons of cuts and whatnot. But, yeah, I know this clip is not too long. Although, I hope I did make up for it by making a, a guide, mostly. I know most of you don't play Atlantean, so this is a uh, purely Atlantean strategy. Although that's still useful, um, if you do like Atlantean. I'll do other strategies later, except it's just that my Atlantean is the best. I mean, not, not like online. It's just the best between my strategies, and my other strategies are weaker than my Atlantean. So if I give you tips in my other tactics, then that's not really useful unless you're actually worse than me, which is not too often. <laughs> Well, maybe, but it's not too often if I'm like my worst god, Hades. Um, what else? Yeah, that, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Whew, I can't believe it. This is the last day of the marathon. Um, that's hard to swallow. Uh, <laughs> that's not what I should have said. It's kind of hard to grasp that this is already the last day of the marathon. But I am happy that this is my 50th video. That's a nice milestone. Hmm. I might take a small break, you know, like three, four days after all this marathon uploading and stuff. Yeah, I might just do a few days off, but 
Uh, yeah. Oh, one more thing. <coughs> yeah, one more thing. I want to play a map called Get a Job. That's capitalized. So Get a Job. It's basically a four-player game. Well, you know, however many join, but four-player max. And it's a very complicated scenario that used to be my favorite. I really like it. It's really, really long, so only play if you have the time. And yeah, if you want to play Get a Job with me, message me. If I get three people at the same time, like, including myself, so if I get two other people besides me at the same time, we can start a Get a Job game, which I will record and make it into separate parts. It should be about two hours long, like, in total. I might do some cuts, whatnot, so that might make up for four different episodes. Uh, I'll try not to lay them out, so I'll just upload them soon after each other, not like one week after each other, just so it doesn't annoy you guys. Um, anything else? Yeah. If I do get people for get a job, I'm just gonna, let's see, here's what I want. Firstly, I want you to have a good connection, because I do not want to play a laggy game that's two hours long. That's just gonna make it longer. <laughs> and speaking of lag, it's gonna be a live recording, so if you do lag, it's gonna take a lot more than two hours, and that might make this entire get a job episode really boring, since it, it's gonna go in like six parts instead of four. I'm just estimating here. Depends how long my clips will be. Um, what else? So good connection, that's one. Two, I kinda do want you to know how to speak English. Actually, everyone knows how to speak English that contacted me, so that's not a problem, but I'm just saying this just in case. Um, I don't mind if, you know, you're like foreign and speak English but with small problems, that that's not a problem. Like we can still play. I'm just saying that you have to be able to speak English because people on Game Ranger for Asian Empires 2, you know, they speak English like I can't even make examples, but they're so bad it's hard to understand and they lag. That's all the negative traits in one, so so those are my first two. Third one, um do not quit. I want you to only be up for this if you have two hours of free time that you're willing to play with me and not just say, oh, I gotta go see ya. I mean, that kind of ruins it. So those are my three main rules. Optional, if you want to talk to me during the entire game like this, you know, it's over Skype, then we could set that up. That's going to make uh, the game a lot more interesting as well. We could do that. Yeah, I usually just chat like this, you know during the game. But if you do want to do multi-commentary for my entire Get a Job episode, that's gonna be lovely. We could even do like three people at the same time if we have three people to do it with. Huh. I don't know if there's anything else. <laughs> I think I got everything through my head that I wanted to spill out there. So I hope this was not boring. Some guy recommended that I make less pauses in my videos. Uh, I tried, but, you know, I still have pauses, like, right now, every every now and then, because I'm thinking of what to say. And plus, I have to make tons of cuts, because sometimes I have a 30-second pause, I cut that out. So for every single marathon episode, I have to make a lot of cuts. I think there was only one episode where I didn't edit at all. Like, you know, I added an intro and faded the outro, whatever. That's the only thing. Why is there a fish in the middle of the dirt? What? There's a fish on that grass. Wow. That's a boss. I don't know how it got there, but that is a boss right there. Good job, fish. Achievement unlocked. Now, that's all I have to say for this episode. I hope it was a great marathon series with you guys. Mm. Yeah, Get a Job is my next mini-series. It's just one episode, but split it into like four parts because it's going to be pretty long. So I do hope that I will get people for that. Please message me if you want to play. Um, I almost always have time. One more thing. Very last thing, I promise. Um, I am free on weekdays from, let's see, 5 to 9? I don't know how late I'm up. Uh, usually later, but I don't want to like play too late from time to time. So 5 to 9, my time. Mine is uh, mountain time. Something like something like uh, 07, I don't know. It's mountain time zone. 
So that's like almost the west border of North America. <clears throat> nah, let's see. So on weekdays, on school days, I only have from 5 to 9 because it's like 3 to 4, you know, I just do extra stuff, watch videos, Facebook, whatever, whatever is updated. From 5 to 9, I can just play with you guys, except, here's another exception, on Thursday, Friday, oh, and uh, Tuesday, of course, Tuesday, I might be busy from 7 to, okay, maybe like 7 to 8, 7 to 9, let's make it like that, because I take a sport, and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 to 9, I'm gone, so that's, that's another thing, however, on the weekends, I'm almost always free. And my Skype is almost always open. That's another thing. I hope you guys like this episode. And <laughs> that's it for the marathon. I don't know if I'll ever do one again. But it was really nice to make, I guess. Mm -hmm. I gotta end it now before I make it too boring. Because, you know, after talking for a long amount of minutes, I just stop being interesting. <laughs> At the beginning of this episode, I was nearly yelling. Now I'm just talking pretty quietly. It's hard to end this whole series. Huh. So that's day seven marathon finale. It was not multi-commentary, but it was still a strategy guide, which should be good enough. <laughs> hope I really helped you guys. And I do appreciate all that positive feedback. Many people say, you know, I helped them and stuff. Great videos, everything. So you guys are really nice. Thank you for that. And I'll see you next time. I'm not sure when that is. Good luck with uh, gaming, I guess. See ya.